Hey everybody, welcome to the program WRSA Radio. I am your host, Grenadier One. As always, I hope you are having a good week. Uh, it's been a good one for me, I guess. Uh, kind of slow on the home front at least, um, which is, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, but uh, yesterday I got up in the morning and, and uh, you know, went about my normal routine. I, I did some work stuff and that I always do and get caught up and all that in the morning. And then, I you know, when I get a little bit of a break in the morning, I... Uh, I'll get a cup of coffee and I'll I'll look at the news and I'll look at my social media and those kind of things. Uh, and that's when I read something that really kind of hit me in a bad spot. I guess this was a uh, this was a post by someone uh, who fancies himself to be, I, I guess I would call him a centrist. Um, in reality, he's he's really more f- further to the left than he than he realizes, but. Uh, the bottom line is, is he's a normie. You know, he's somebody that I would call a normie. Um, but I guess it shouldn't surprise me that he would post something like this because of that. But it, anyway, it, it did. It, it kind of, it just kind of caught me off guard. I guess uh, this guy posted a message, and and his followers, you know, really echoed it and just, oh yeah, you're so right. You know, they approved of everything that he was saying in this in this thing. And it just made me realize that we have both fallen so far from baseline and also that we just have a long way to go. We we we're gonna keep falling. And and while we fall, we have a long way to go to educate people, to try to to stave off some of that. It just felt like it was a, a validation of just kind of an overall sense of setback that I that I had felt this week. Um, I don't want to get into the specifics of everything that the guy posted because it would just kind of just you know derail the whole show. But I, I want to suffice to suffice it to say that that he's convinced that you know everything is fine and the future looks great. Uh, and it was just one of those things that kind of hits you, I guess, because it was just at the right moment for me. And you get this kind of gut-churning sensation. And, and, and I just realized, you know, wow, this guy is either completely consumed by the propaganda or he's just in complete denial of reality. And I, I, it's probably both of those things, but either way, it was, it was just really sad to look at. And... <laughs> You know, everything is not fine, of course. It's terrible, and it's getting worse. And, and, and sometimes I struggle to, uh, to not let that get me down, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hard. We, we continue to decline. And emblematic of that this week, we saw yet another indictment against President Trump being handed down by the Fulton County District Attorney in my home state of Georgia. And, and this was just, it's just an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. When this came out late uh, on Monday, I, I think it was late Monday night, uh, I posted something over on Gab that I want to touch on here because it has a little bit of bearing, but um, I posted a message saying that, you know, Governor Kemp should do his job and issue a pardon to, you know, just wipe this this thing away before it, it even gets going. Well, I made a mistake there, uh, and I don't like to make mistakes like that, so so I wanted to clean that up, but... I wanted to mention it here because I find it an interesting point of fact that in Georgia, the governor does not have the power to issue a pardon, okay? That power rests in the Pardons and Parole Board. Now, I knew that the governor of Georgia had a a limited power, okay? He's not... There are some states where the governors have a a lot of capability. Uh, In Georgia, it's not really like that. Um, The... The... Most of the power in the state really rests in the legislature, uh, and I remember growing up, um, you know, the Speaker of the House uh, in Georgia was was widely looked at as the most powerful man in the state. Um, the governor just doesn't have a lot of teeth, but I was unaware that he could not issue pardons. Uh, I, I think that played into the pursuit of these charges against Trump here in the state. Uh there are avenues that are still open to kind of squash this this nonsense here, but in my opinion, those will not be utilized. And I, I want to 
to I want to say these things for for the listeners out there because I think there's a lot of people who are thinking, you know, maybe along the lines of, well, Trump's going to get out of this. Uh, Trump burned his bridges with the political network here in Georgia, even though he was right and and the boys in Atlanta were wrong. Uh, that that that's not to mention that you know, a message was sent to the governor, at least in my opinion, it was a clear message was sent when the, the, the future son-in-law of the governor was killed in a very suspicious car accident uh, back in 2020, I think it was. Uh, but I think that combination put, you know, Governor Kemp as well as, uh, you know, Secretary of State, uh, I, I, I well against Trump, and, and they, they understand that the people that we're dealing with here are deadly serious. And I'm not making an excuse for them, by the way. I'm just explaining the situation for people who might, you know, still have these expectations that something should be done and that things are on the up and up, because it's not. It, it, it's rigged, as, as Trump said in one of his, uh, his posts this week, one of his tweets, I guess you would call them, or truths or whatever it is his his platform uses um this case will go to court just like the other three cases against the former president barring some kind of other intervention or or something that happens but um he is being made an example of he is he is the scapegoat uh the, the symbolic victim that the deep state is going to crucify as a message to all of us that you know everything we knew about the old traditional America is dead and gone. They are they are going to burn it all down and replace it with their new idea of utopia, and Donald Trump is going to symbolically be burned to signify the death of old white men. Which really kind of brings us to the main dish for the show this week, and that is the the tragic wildfires in Maui. Uh, last week, I mentioned weather manipulation and directed energy weapons, and, and I mentioned those as being possibly involved in the Maui fires. Now, normally, I try not to jump to, you know, the most outlying possibility, and, and over the last week, there, there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of discussion about those things, but uh, that's why I want to mention them again. I, I try not to jump to that kind of far-out idea, because... I don't want to be the source of disinformation. If I if I mention something like that, it's because I really think it's legit and it's a it's a possible explanation of you know whatever event we're talking about. But with, with that being said, this week has brought out kind of a host of people who are echoing the idea of directed energy weapons being involved uh, with these as well as other fires uh, historically. Um, Folks, be very discriminating when you assess these people. Uh, most of them mean well, and, and they want to inform others, just like I do, but they, they also get tunnel vision, and, and they get locked onto sometimes the most fringe idea, which causes them to exclude facts and information that, that run counter to that idea. And they will post things that, what they call evidence, or what is called evidence, that looks like it validates what they're suggesting and ignore things that that maybe run counter to that. Uh, I threw that idea out there as hey this this is a possibility here because why not we are we are in clown world why not does it really matter you know about that um, I don't think it does uh, it, it, it's certainly a possibility but I I'm certainly not shutting the door on other ideas and other causes. It's possible, but it's also, you know, just as possible that something else is the cause. This is, but this is what the deep state wants. They, they sometimes use these people to further, you know, like a wild idea, um, which they will then go and debunk publicly. And, and they'll use that debunking to stop or stifle or shut down any conversation about you know other theories outside of that mainstream narrative and I, I've warned about this before on the show and and I felt like I needed to say this again because 
I think we're going to see that happen with this story any day now. I expect that the word is kind of coming down through mass media, the mainstream media, that, okay, you got to get out there and start running stories about directed energy weapons and, and why there's just no way that these were used on Maui. You know, then, then they will use that to attack anyone who suggests that these fires were intentionally set as a, you know, they'll say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You know, oh, those evil conspiracy theorists. The government wants to have it both ways. They want the pl- they want all the deniability. The reason I had brought this up was was because of you know the the UFO uh, hearings and things that had been going on. They they want this idea of exotic technology out there, and it just it just muddies the water. You know, it gives them a lot of cover and a lot of a lot of smoke and mirror that they can hide behind. Um, the bottom line is is that. It really doesn't matter how the fires began. It, it very well could have been exotic technology, but it could have been nefarious individuals that just have cans of gas or something like that, or even people, you know, causing electrical lines to fall in in areas that are most likely to catch fire. There, there's a lot of capabilities, a lot of possibilities out there. There's been some video of of uh, what looks to be an electrical line falling. Uh, and and possibly causing a fire, but there's there's ways to make that happen too, remotely or maybe using exotic technology or drones. You know, there's a lot of things that that are possible there. It may have just been high winds naturally knocking down those power lines to cause the fire, and at that point, someone took advantage of that, you know, to implement an agenda that we certainly are seeing being worked now in front of us. But it doesn't really matter in the end what caused the fire. What matters is that there is an agenda being worked and the elitist are taking advantage of it. I'll, I'll get back to the cause shortly because there is something, there is a part of it that matters uh, that, that we don't need to, to ignore. But uh, anyway, when, when I say that there is an agenda at work, well, what am I talking about? Well, we're getting a lot of reports out of Maui in the aftermath of this that are not painting a a good picture. In fact, this is quickly becoming a Katrina level event that is going to be a black eye on the face of government yet again. And, and that's assuming everything is on the up and up again. Um, But let's start with reports that that the government has essentially locked down the island. They are issuing these orange or red printed passes that are supposed to be displayed in the car windows for everyone on the island. Uh, and if you travel, you're supposed to have this orange pass in the window of your car or I guess carrying it with you or whatever, um, or you will be detained. Now, let, let's break that down because my initial reaction to that obviously is very negative. Um, if we're talking about a place where people from other areas could come in, for example, and, and loot homes like you know, like you see in hurricane damaged areas like in Florida or Louisiana or something like that, where people from out of state might say, oh, well, or even just from areas that weren't affected, hey, let's go, let's go over there and take advantage of that. You know, that makes sense then to have a means of controlling access. If we were talking about just a, a limited area to prevent people from just, you know, coming in, hey, hey they're going to go drive around and, and look at the damage, and they end up causing traffic jams and problems for the, the, the relief efforts that are trying to go on there. Okay, that makes sense to me, and, and I don't really have an issue with that. But that's not what we're, we're talking about here. These passes are being issued for the entire island. So even if you live on the other side of the island that wasn't affected by this fire, and you want to just go out to the grocery store, there's no damage in your area, you still have to have this pass, or the police can stop and detain you. Now, to me, that's an overreach. Okay, that, that is so that they can control the movement of people on this island. And from the sound of it, what that might, what that might relate to is, is actually controlling communications. There's a lot of reports coming out, uh, at least what reports we are able to get out, because there's a significant failure of communications on the island. Uh, even areas that were not in the path of the fire or directly affected by the fire, Well, they're without power and telecom. So what people are having to do, uh, at least what some of the the people that were posting that I saw, they were having to drive 
to higher ground up on like hilltops or mountaintops to get a cell signal, which is coming from some of the other islands that were not affected. So if you control people moving, then you're able to stop people from getting communications out that's the net effect of it even if that's not the intention of it, it it's it's what what can happen because if they're issuing passes then the unspoken implication is that the pass can be taken away from you so if you're perhaps reporting something that they don't want to be reported and they identify you well then they can take your pass away to keep you from going up on the hill to get a cell signal now we're getting reports that food and water are being consolidated for distribution. So if you have no long-term supplies because of your, you know, your home's gone, for example, or maybe you didn't prepare for possible failures in the supply chain, I, I can't imagine somebody living on an island and not having some preparation put back. But uh, but you're you're forced to go get your food and water from these government distribution points, and apparently that food and water is not very good. Now, I don't know the details of that. I haven't seen anybody specifically saying exactly what uh, the problem there is, but I've heard people saying that the water has kind of a foul taste to it and that the food is uh, like survival rations. Well, you know, the water tasting foul, that, that could be an issue. That could be contamination. That could be, you know, metals, fuels, whatever. We don't know exactly what the issue there is. It could just be that the water itself is is maybe kind of uh what do you like sulfur water that kind of stuff so it might just have a foul taste to it or spring water what we don't know for sure uh the, the rations uh that, that doesn't seem like it's a very very big deal for me other than you know yeah they taste terrible i've eaten those survival rations before uh just because that was all that some uh you know a, a camp that we that could get that i went to so they had this, the survival rations, which were like these low sodium, and they just tasted terrible. There's nothing wrong with them. They just didn't taste very good. But, uh, you know, chalk one up for people who prepare for disasters uh, and, and learn that lesson if you haven't already. But uh, anyway, what, what is more disturbing is that we are being told that the government is also blocking relief and aid being delivered to the island by anyone that is not on an approved list by the government. So locals and people with boats and aircraft have been trying to get supplies into these affected areas uh, to the island, and they're being turned away by the government. There, there was one report today that I saw that container shipments of supplies had been unloaded uh i guess they and, and these were from private sources and they were meant for some very you know some specific areas like a village or neighborhood area whatnot um you know there's a tribal areas in some of those places uh but they were meant for specific recipients and the government was refusing to release those from the docks and this report said that they were planning to confiscate them to distribute to general pop population of the island so basically they're stealing private donations to very specific people and giving it to whomever they want to and, and that's the report i i've only seen that once this morning as i was reading through things uh, i haven't seen any additional validation of that so take that with a grain of salt but this is the kind of thing that that we're hearing it's the kind of things that we're we're dealing with it's very very disturbing but in the confusion of things it's often reported that something has happened and, and reality really is much different. It, it's, you know, miscommunication or someone assuming malice when it's really just inefficiency or, or more likely ineptitude uh, that is at fault. Now, uh, I know a little bit about disaster response. I've worked some, some very small uh, incidents and, and I've trained for very large incidents. So I know that there are problems that are going to crop up and that are unplanned for. And so we have to allow some leeway for that kind of thing to happen and, you know, the process to adjust itself. I, I don't want to heap criticism on these agencies when it's not warranted. But that said, we have to make sure that indeed that is what we are dealing with and that this is not, you know, intentional feet dragging or mismanagement that's happening at higher levels. You know, they're not releasing the a the resources that are needed to the people on the ground we don't we don't want to attack those people on the ground if they are struggling with a system that they know is not working but they don't really have the power to fix it themselves so let's be 
careful or I would urge some caution in kind of the blame game until we get a little bit better understanding of what is going on and what is really causing the logjam or these problems. But it has come to light, however, that there are motivations for people higher up the chain that leads us to question this and, and be critical of this response. That, and, and that's legitimate. Are these problems natural and just due to the system? Or are they indeed part of a plan to rid the island of most of its people? Uh, are they seeking to just kind of cover their asses due to this incompetence that I talked about? Or are they really trying to kill people or f at least force them to move away? And it's looking more and more like they are trying to force people to leave. They're, they're making life unbearable in, in the conditions that, that are there right now. Um, there are already reports that insurance companies are telling homeowners that they will not cover the reconstruction of these homes. Uh, there, there are already developers and agents for these wealthy celebrities that are swooping in and contacting people who have lost everything, and they're, they're in compromised position, you know. But they're offering to buy these properties at pennies on the dollar, you know. We'll, we'll take this off your hands, that kind of thing. Uh, the governor of Hawaii has issued statements that he was looking into buying property to make a memorial for the dead uh, and to purchase property at you know, I guess through eminent domain, uh, so that it can be redeveloped. It's looking really, it's awfully suspicious. When we, when we consider that there were also multiple, uh, you know, statements from officials, some of this happening, those coming out before I any of this disaster in the lead up to all of this, statements that, that were, that were made about making Maui, you know, one of these modern 15 minute city kind of things. When we take all of these things into context, it looks more and more like this was done intentionally. In my opinion, this is yet another example of taking advantage of a crisis, which is far easier to do when you're the ones that caused the crisis to begin with. <laughs> now, in the midst of all this, we, we cannot forget the most difficult piece, and this is what I meant when I said I would get back to kind of the cause of this, because it does matter what the cause was when we are dealing with the loss of lives. So far, the official death toll is just above 100 people. I think I saw 111 this morning, but there are many, many others who are missing. Uh, if they have not been found by this time, it is unfortunately very likely that they are gone. Uh, there was one report that I saw, which was a first-hand account. Uh, someone had seen a, I guess, a makeshift morgue, and they said it looked like several hundred bodies inside. Um, we've heard today that there are medical personnel going around taking DNA samples from the families of the missing in order to try and identify bodies. So this death toll is going to grow, uh, and it will not shock me to hear uh, perhaps a thousand people or more have lost their lives due to this event. And many of those, unfortunately, were children. Uh, I have heard two different stories, one saying that school was canceled uh, and many children had stayed home. Uh, and then there was another report that said that the school had been released early which sent kids home without their parents even knowing that they were leaving school. Uh, it's possible that both of those things w were true, that um, maybe a, an elementary school had gone early in the day, but then they canceled, so they didn't, the high school kids didn't go, and they sent the other kids home. You know, there's a, there's a possibility that both of those things are, are true at the same time, but either way... You had a lot of children who were at home without their parents. And we've heard that warning signals and systems failed to operate. And at least one person reported that the traffic in the main town, Lahani there, uh, was held up intentionally by a police roadblock, which resulted in people being stuck there on the waterfront and many of them dying in their cars and those that didn't had to leap out and flee into the ocean. 
Now, my friends, if this was done intentionally to further some bullshit climate agenda, this is murder. And I believe that it was, at some level, intentional. And that needs to be all that you need to know to understand what they have planned for the rest of us. These are the depths that they will sink to. We will all be reduced so that they can have this dream world that they want, that they are planning for. And they have no quarrel, no problem with getting that by any means necessary, including the intentional murder of children. No one is going to save us, and we are all that we have. Now that's all I got time for this week. Like and subscribe. Come see us over on Gab and the Mothership. And I will see you on the next episode.